Greetings, this is Jed Schlackman. I'm a holistic therapist practicing here in Miami, Florida. And in this video, I will be speaking about the topic of past lives and past life regression therapy. This is a therapeutic approach that uses hypnosis or similar methods of helping people enter an altered state of consciousness where they're able to access very deep memories, very deep inner wisdom that will in some way assist them in healing or gaining insight and understanding into themselves and their life path. This is a healing approach which is actually very ancient. In many different cultures and civilizations, the concept of past lives and reincarnation has been widely accepted and integrated into their healing traditions. If we look at shamanism, at the yogic traditions, at Taoism and Buddhism, and some of these other very ancient spiritual practices, we see that people have worked with the unconscious mind to access memories and facilitate healing. In the shamanic traditions, there is a concept of soul retrieval. And in that tradition, it's recognized that people may have parts of their self, you could say parts of their psyche, that are in some way disconnected or disassociated from the whole or from the current focus of that self or individual. This is usually a result of some type of conflict, some type of stress or trauma that has occurred, something that's not resolved within that individual's consciousness. That may occur at some earlier point in the current lifetime, while it also often has occurred during other lifetimes. In order to access those experiences, one has to use some type of method that allows for journeying into the deeper levels of consciousness. A shaman might do it for their client or the person they're working with, so that shamanic practitioner may go on a journey themselves into the lower realms, into the unconscious, to explore where the origin of that experience is and help that person reclaim that part of themselves. In regression therapy, the facilitator, the therapist, is actually guiding the person they're working with to go on that journey themselves to access their own memories, their own hidden history, you could say, to discover or uncover the origin, the source of a particular issue they're dealing with. The unconscious mind carries all those memories, all those experiences within, so it's like this universal recorder. And from our human personality self, we look at this in a linear way. So we think of our past, our present, and our future as happening on a linear timeline. From the point of view of the higher self, or the soul, those experiences actually all already exist. So the past, the present, and future all coexist within an infinite field of consciousness. This may be a little bit difficult to grasp or understand. However, this can be recognized when people go through a regression experience and they're able to access a future memory. So I'm using the word memory in the sense of a recorded experience. So memory doesn't have to be only something from our historical past. It could be something that is 
contained within the soul's field of awareness, the soul's memory banks, we could say. And in some way, that experience has a connection to the self, to the identity that is functioning in this present moment. So in the regression therapy sessions, we're typically having that higher consciousness bring up some type of memory or experience that is pertinent to the individual's current life, to some issue or concern that they're seeking help with at the present time. Our souls, from this theoretical understanding, are having hundreds, perhaps thousands of lifetimes, and it's like a school system for the soul, where during those different lives, the soul is learning different things, mastering different skills, different levels of understanding. It's playing many different roles. So the roles could be polarity-based roles, such as male and female, savior, victim, it could be someone who's rich, someone who's poor, someone who's a murderer, someone who sacrifices themselves. So there's many different kinds of roles that we play in life. By going through all these different roles and experiences, the soul's understanding is deepened and it is able to get to a point of greater awareness of more integration and wholeness. Looking at things that way, it allows us to not judge and condemn all the different experiences that human beings are having here on this planet Earth. Even the things that we may judge as negative or horrible, those experiences are serving a higher purpose in some way. That doesn't mean we condone or support those things, but we recognize that on some level of consciousness, we could recognize that as the soul level or the higher self, there was a choice to pursue a lifetime with those types of experiences. In sessions that I've had with clients, they sometimes describe what is happening in the spiritual realm where their consciousness is going through experiences in between lifetimes. And on that realm, there are choices made about what lifetime to enter into and what are the experiences and lessons that may be present in that life. Sometimes it's a choice to have a very pleasant, soothing type of life, a life where things are not that challenging, where there are many rewarding and positive type of experiences, whereas other times the choice is made to go through some difficult lifetimes, some challenging lives where there is pain and suffering, heartbreak, things of that nature. When those more unpleasant experiences are carried within the consciousness, they may create unpleasant effects crossing over into another incarnation. So a person may have some type of illness, some type of psychological imbalance, some type of physical deformity, something in the current life that is actually a reflection or carryover from experiences in another lifetime. It's helpful to look at physical reality as sort of a holographic projection. So we have spirit, consciousness, we have energy, and then we have what appears to be solid matter or physical form. 
However, that solid matter or physical form is really just energy as well being condensed into what appears to be solid objects, solid form, using patterns that are present in a field of consciousness. So that consciousness uses the energy fields to carry information into the physical level of reality to direct how things are created or manifested at that level. The nature of identity is something that is somewhat mysterious. There are people that have what are often labeled multiple personalities or dissociative identity disorders where there are actual changes in their physical body depending on which personality or subpersonality has been triggered or activated. So in that case, it's even more clear evident how the consciousness is guiding or transforming the physical form, the physical expression. When we talk about consciousness, we can recognize that there is both localized consciousness, so your apparent individual identity, and then there is non-local consciousness, a level of consciousness where those seemingly individual identities are actually interconnected. There are many parapsychology researchers who have examined paranormal phenomena that expose the nature of consciousness as being ultimately non-local. So when we go into a meditative state, when we go into hypnosis, we are able to access those <coughs> deeper non-local levels of consciousness. So we're not just confined to our present personality, to the memories of our present lifetime. We can access other aspects of consciousness. We can access our soul and the memories that it carries. We can access other beings, other entities, so we may communicate with beings that exist in non-physical levels of reality, or we may communicate with the soul or higher self of individuals that are incarnate on the earth plane. There is a phenomenon known as remote viewing, which is a formalized psychic projection technique where a person is able to access information about some unknown target or location. So they're not told what they're going to be observing. They may be given some type of symbol or coordinate a letter or number, something which represents what the target, we could say, of their exercise would be. That person opens to their extrasensory perceptions, and those perceptions can come through any of the physical senses, so they may see, hear, feel, sense, or smell things and they will begin to describe or record whatever impressions they're getting. And then only later on will they start to analyze that data and see how well it may reflect what the target that they were being asked to access truly was. This is something that has been researched by different academic institutions, as well as applied in military and intelligence organizations. It's really not something new, just as past life regression therapy is not something new. It's just a rediscovery or a re-examination 
of practices that have been applied for thousands of years, used in many different cultures and civilizations. Now, as a regression therapist, it's not my desire to be over-directive about where a person's consciousness is being guided. So I use some very basic cues and symbols, some guided imagery, to help that person form a bridge between the awareness of the conscious mind and the awareness of the higher consciousness of things that are present on a subconscious level. I don't know ahead of time where a person's higher consciousness will guide them, but once they're there, I am able to help them focus in to see things more clearly, to lead them further as they explore that particular scene or environment. The person is not asleep, so they're conscious in the sense that they're able to describe to the therapist what they're experiencing, so they can move their body if directed to, they can speak if directed to. So it's like having a waking daydream in a way. So you're having this rather vivid vision or imagery coming through. You're reliving that experience, but there's also a part of your awareness that is still present in the room where you are present with that therapist, with the person facilitating this. A past life regression can be done on your own as well. So there are many audio recordings which you can find that will give you some basic cues and imagery to help you access that state. This is a relatively safe process, so you don't get stuck in that other reality, just as you don't get stuck in a dream that you have at night. Once you wake up and come out of it, you're back in this seemingly physical reality here even though we may consider this reality to be just another dream. The process of going into a past life recall can offer profound insights. Often our soul, our spiritual guides, our higher consciousness will give us important information. It will help us see things about ourselves that we need to understand and they give specific guidance about the path that we're on in this lifetime. And since it is a source of guidance that is loving and compassionate, it will also help a person heal whatever issues may be unresolved. So if there is some type of distress or trauma present from those memories, the soul or higher self can provide guidance to help bring peace, to help provide some type of resolution to whatever may have been experienced. Regression therapy has been practiced, as I said earlier, for thousands of years in one form or another. In modern times, it's been used by many psychologists, by psychiatrists, by counselors and social workers. So it's something that is gaining greater recognition in the healing arts. Part of that opening up to this approach has come about due to some prominent psychologists and psychiatrists writing books about their experiences helping their patients. Brian Weiss is one of the most well-known authors, and his first book was Many Lives, Many Masters, and he's gone on to write several other books on this topic. 
another well-known author is Michael Newton, and his books focus more on the between lives state, what he calls the life between lives, and his therapy he refers to as a spiritual regression. So it's not about just going into past life and reliving those memories. It's also about going beyond that life, going through the transition from that incarnation up into the spiritual realm and receiving input and guidance on that level. There are many other authors who have written books on these topics, and you can get a variety of insights and perspectives from reading those books. In general, past life regression therapy is something that can be done multiple times. So a person may do one session and get some type of support or guidance, and then at another time when they feel they need more healing support or additional guidance, they might do another session. Other people may choose to just do it one time for curiosity or for confirmation. By confirmation, I'm referring to people seeking confirmation that the soul does continue on, that consciousness is not just in that one lifetime, but that they do reincarnate or go on to other experiences. If any of you have additional questions about this topic, you're all welcome to visit my website, which is www.phinsights.com. That's P-H-I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S dot com. And the section on regression therapy would just be a slash with regression.html after the main URL. It's been my pleasure taking this time to share with you to give a brief introduction to the subject of past lives and regression therapy. Namaste.